What's up, Elite Army? This is your kinda well, kinda toxic host, Sarah Rittendale, bringing you another episode of Well Ish. Elite, happy Monday. What's going on? Today, we're going to be talking about settling in your relationship. And my goal here is not to ruin your day or ruin your week. We're still out trying to have a kick ass week, okay? But In order to set us up to do that, we have to become aware of the relationships in our lives that aren't serving us, things that we could be doing to step into the best version of ourselves, because really that's the reason that I'm here. I'm here to help you become the best version of yourself, and if you're consistently being bogged down or held down by a relationship that isn't serving you, that is causing you more havoc in your life than good... I'm only here to point that out, and it's your job to do with that information and that awareness what you will. So welcome to this episode. Hopefully, you know, I don't piss you off too much, but there are some things that have to be said, if I'm being honest with you. Now, before I really get into it, if you're here with me on YouTube and I look like a pile of garbage, (laughs) I try to do my makeup, I try to do my hair, but here's the deal. I am currently on day two of an entire week living without mirrors in my house because I promised you guys that I was going to be bringing more YouTube videos to your life. So the way that I'm going to be doing that is by doing these experiments that are telling of whether or not things are actually good for your mental well-being, help you become the best version of yourself, help you accomplish becoming the best version of yourself like they claim to be. So this week, I'm going an entire week without mirrors, which means that I had to do my makeup and my hair without (laughs) a mirror. I can't look in my phone camera to know that I'm 100% positioned correctly. I feel like I do this enough to have a pretty good idea, but you know, if it looks like it could be a little bit better. That's why. But it will be a really good YouTube episode. So make sure to tune in for that this weekend is when I'm going to be posting it. I haven't 100% decided if it's going to be like Friday, Saturday or Sunday, but one of those three days, keep your eyes out for that episode because it'll be entertaining. (laughs) So that said, let's go ahead and get into the episode. I want to say let's dive right in. Let's get right into the meat and potatoes. But I'm honestly going to ease us in a little bit because I think that there's a lot of misconception around relationships in today's day and age between what is settling and what is not settling. We're exposed to so much on the internet. We are constantly seeing perfect relationships and we're constantly having access to all of these different people that we could be with that you wouldn't if social media and the internet and dating apps and all of these things didn't exist. We have so much more access to each other now. So there's so much more opportunity out there, which is obviously a really great thing. And it is an interesting way to meet people on the internet. But with that, we think that there's something wrong with a good relationship because the internet paints this false pretense that there's always going to be better out there. And if you're constantly chasing what could be out there, you'll never be happy in what is actually in your life. You have to choose to love the person that you're with every single day. You choose to work on life and to get to know each other more with that person every single day. It's a choice. It's not some fairy tale land that everything is sunshine and rainbows and you get along swimmingly and everything is wonderful. It is a choice to work on that love and to work on that relationship with another person. But you have to be careful who you choose to do that with. And that's the thing. We hear these things like, oh, I have to choose. And it's like, okay, well, I'm choosing to love you, you piece of garbage. And it doesn't have to be like that. You choose a person that makes you feel good inside. You don't choose the person that sometimes makes you feel like fucking ass, but you've already made your choice. So you're going to stick to it and make it work and figure it out because this is the choice you made. I heard a quote in a song the other day that said, darling, this is love, not war. And it really struck me because I thought it highlighted so well that a relationship is work, but it is not something that makes you feel overwhelmed or depressed or super fucking angry and feeling you're going to lose your goddamn mind. Work in a relationship is nothing 
more than working to understand the other person that you're sharing your life with more, working to learn how to show up for that person in the best way possible, learning what that person needs in order to feel loved, learning what you can do to feel loved and what you would like from your significant other, learning what that other person likes and what they don't like, learning what that person, learning what makes that person feel good and what doesn't make them feel good. Work is love. Work is surrounded by love. It is not surrounded by hate and anger and sadness. And it's hard work because it will include arguments and disagreements and uncomfortable conversations. But you're making an effort to love each other better and you're making an effort to love yourself better for it. It's love. It is not war. It should not feel like you're going to fucking war to make this relationship work. It should not feel like war inside of your own head. And sometimes it really feels that stressful, but we think that we should stay because we've committed to this person or we love this person or we've spent this much time with this person and poured this much of ourselves into this person that we think we have to just keep going. You've committed this far. I have to figure out a way to make this work or I love this person and I want to figure out a way to make this work or I want so badly for this person to be the person that I end up with. So I'm going to figure out how to make this work. But that's not enough to make yourself miserable. It's not enough for that to be the relationship that you're supposed to be in. It's not a good enough reason to live the rest of our human experience uncomfortable and potentially miserable. There is so much free will in a relationship. You can make any relationship work. You can bend and fold and mold in order to get a person to stay in your life. And it feels like you're winning because the person is physically there. You are both still physically in the relationship. You're still texting. You're still hanging out. You're still working on it because you're arguing all the time. You haven't physically separated because for whatever reason, you guys have this like fucking obsessive attachment to each other to make it work or to feel like you can't leave or you feel trapped or you don't want to let the person down because they've guilted you into feeling like if they leave, they're giving up on you or whatever you feel comfortable in that situation, whatever the reason is, you're both still physically showing up. So it feels like there's hope to work towards something. But do you want to live like that? Do you want to live in a relationship that the person is physically there? And sometimes it's great, but you can't help but find yourself constantly questioning why they are not the person that you know they are capable of becoming, why they're not the person that you agreed to dating, why they aren't the person that they used to be, why they aren't capable of becoming the person that you want them to be? Why can't this person just be who I want? Is that the life that you want for yourself? A great relationship is made up of three types of compatibility. The first one is intellectual compatibility. You teach and learn from one another. The second one is emotional compatibility. You grow together and you are vulnerable with one another. The third one is sexual or creative compatibility. This is not physical attraction, but it's how your desires, attractions, ideas, attitudes, all of that align. You can have a good enough relationship with one and a half, two of those, which is why we think, oh, this works enough for me. I don't want to see if there's anything better out there because, you know, maybe this is as good as it's going to get. And you only have one and a half or two of those and you make it work because it is a okay relationship. You can have a good relationship, but in order to have a great relationship, you need all three types of compatibility. And let me tell you why. You're not going to have all three types at every single fucking moment of your relationship. There are going to be times that they wax and wane, and you're going to have to pick up the slack with the other forms of compatibility when one of them is lacking. And that's what it takes to have a long-term relationship is being able to pick up slack in other areas areas of your relationship when something is starting to dip a little bit, but it just dips a little bit. It doesn't go away. It's not never there. At the end of the day, all three of those types of compatibility exists between the two of you. 
And I personally, I mean, I can think of my past relationships and think of the ways that we didn't have all three immediately, whether the relationship was like bad and toxic or whether the relationship was fine, but it just wasn't the relationship for me. Intellectually, they, their teaching is always one sided. It's always one person trying to get the other person to understand. And the other person is resistant to learning and to growing into understanding what the person is saying or the willingness to grow in in relationships for emotional compatibility was stunted because people weren't willing to change their mind. They were set in their ways and wanted things a certain way, which was a good thing because if we had caved or molded to what the other person had wanted, we would be giving up big chunks of ourselves that we didn't want to give. And sure as shit in the toxic relationships when it comes to emotional compatibility is that there was zero vulnerability. And if you were being vulnerable, it was like victim ask vulnerability that you did all of this stuff to me and you make me feel like fucking shit all the time and vulnerable in that way. It's not genuine, authentic vulnerability. And sexual compatibility, holy shit, I can picture that. You are not on the same page as your partner sexually. It means more to one person than it does the other. One person doesn't know how to say no. One person is okay with multiple sexual partners and the other person is not. You don't make the time or have the vulnerability to express and communicate about what you want sexually. You don't take the time to figure out what desires your partner has or take the time to figure out what desires you would like to have met. You need all three in order to have a great relationship. And if you hear that and you aren't sure or you know that you don't have all three of those with your partner, it is going to be something to be mindful of in the next couple days, the next couple weeks that you have to realize, do we actually have this compatibility or do we not? Do we only have one or two of these? or any. <laughs> Sometimes it's none. I'm going to say something that's going to be tough to hear if you are settling in your relationship. And I apologize ahead of time because it's not going to be fun, but consider it tough love. Everyone, everyone in your life can see that you are settling. Everyone knows. We can cherry pick you out of a group of people that you and your partner are not supposed to be together. Everyone knows it, including you. Because if you heard me say that, and that just made you question yourself and your relationship, you're aware of it. You might not be ready to admit it yet. You might not want to become aware of it in your own head. But deep down in your subconscious, you know that this relationship is not for you. Now, sometimes it's not true that everyone sees it. And the only reason that that's true is because one or both parties is very good at keeping things behind closed doors. They don't want anybody to know the truth behind their relationship. And so they put on this facade and put on this mask to make it seem like their relationship is great. But Truthfully, they are not being honest with themselves. They're not being honest with the people in their life. And that in itself shows toxicity and it shows that you are settling for a relationship because you feel that you can't disclose the things and the happenings that are going on in your relationship to the people in your life that love you. And if you're here listening to this episode and you're feeling uncomfortable or afraid or upset, I'm sorry, sister. But that does mean that you are most likely settling. But that's okay. Take a deep breath. Don't get upset. You don't have to do absolutely anything about it right now. All we're doing today is bringing awareness to the issue. It's important for you to be aware of it so that you know what steps that you have to take in order to become the best version of yourself, in order to curate a life that you love. And you're not going to be able to do that if you're in a relationship that is constantly bringing you down. But you do not have to leave the relationship immediately. You are now going to just be aware of it. You're going to be mindful of it. You're going to go back to your relationship and look at it with a different point of view and keep an eye out for the ways that you could be settling. You're going to look at it and ask yourself, do we teach and learn from each other? Do we grow together? Are we getting vulnerable together? Do we care about each other's interests and desires and sexual compatibility in our lives? Do we connect in that way? 
it means you can work to build your life up around you so that when you have the heart to leave that person and make the right choice for yourself, it won't leave as giant of a gaping hole as it would if you were to just leave right now. Allow yourself the time to build the strength to leave. You will build up that strength eventually and be ready to do it eventually. You have to prove to yourself that you are ready to do it so that you're not constantly questioning whether or not you made the right choice. You have to know in your heart that this was the right thing for you in order for you to actually successfully be able to leave a relationship, especially if this relationship is tumultuous, especially if it's one that you've been settling for a while and you think that it's just going to completely explode when you try to make these moves. It's going to be really hard, especially like if the person's toxic and they're going to try to manipulate you and gaslight you into staying and you've fallen for that for so long that it's going to be easy to believe what they're saying. It takes a couple times to be able to really distance yourself from that person. And so you have to be good and ready and know that you are doing the right thing, confident in your own decisions. Trust yourself that you are doing the right thing for you to confidently and without wavering, move on from that person that is no longer serving you. I want to give you three surefire signs that you are settling to really solidify this in, to really get a good idea if this is something that you are experiencing. If you're still unsure, if you don't know if this could be you, here are three signs that prove that this is something that you are experiencing in your relationship. The first one is you are not growing as an individual. You are either staying stagnant or your life is progressively getting worse because you're with this person. This doesn't mean that your life changes into this beautiful dream life, that you get this awesome job and make tons of money, although it could mean that. And the reason it could mean that is because what this means is you have confidence. You feel good in your own skin. You want to work to become a better version of yourself. You want to show up as the best version of yourself, not because anybody else is forcing you to or asking you to, but because you genuinely want to show up as a better person for the relationship and honestly just for you, that you're working to become the version of yourself that you know you are capable of becoming and that that person is supporting you in doing that. This looks like being able to create the life we want as an individual while having the person that we love support us on that journey, that are allowing that to happen, that make sure we feel loved and capable of accomplishing that. A lot of the time we pour so much energy into trying to make that other person happy, into trying to make the relationship work when it doesn't, that we have no energy for ourselves. We have no energy to even stop and consider, am I living my life in the way that I know that I'm capable of living it? Is this my best self? Is this who I want to show up as? We don't even have the time or the capacity to do that because we're so fucking focused and figuring out how to make this relationship that doesn't work, work. The second one is that you're constantly unsure. And this comes in so many forms. You're unsure of how long you'll actually be together. You're unsure if they're telling you the truth. You're unsure of their feelings or your feelings for this person. You're unsure if your friends like them. You're unsure if your family likes them. You're unsure if their opinions of them are true. You're unsure if this is the person you deeply and truly could spend the absolute rest of your life with every single day for the rest of your life until you are old and gray. You are unsure if this is the person that is going to look like the cute Instagram videos that you would like to be with them, that it's the old people that are still madly in love and together. If you feel like you have to become something else or do something in order to make this work or in order to make them like you. If you feel like you have to do something major to make it work. I was watching George Lopez the other day and his daughter, Carmen, was in a relationship with this guy that is going to be drafted to play baseball in Georgia. And she's 16 and she wants to stay with him and she's devastated because she doesn't want him to go all the way to Georgia. So she decides that they're going to get engaged. And in order to get married in the state of Georgia, according to the show, was that she had to get pregnant. So her idea was that 
that she was going to get pregnant and then they were going to get married. And he had given her a ring so that they could get married, but then hadn't done the pregnancy thing yet. And when she said to him, you have to get me pregnant so that we can get married and we can go create this life together. She wakes up in the morning and he fucking disappears because that's not how you stay with a person. You don't force them to stay with you by creating these major circumstances. Now, obviously, it's a television show, so it's exaggerated. But the point is that you don't make these major life shifts in order to fit this person into your life, that it doesn't take you changing your entire fucking life or changing who you are in order to get this person to stay with you. You feel that you have to provide something to them in order to prove that this relationship works. Money, a ride, shelter, sex, you're going to be BFFs with their friends. You're going to be completely intimate with your family in order to prove that you fit in with them. You're doing too much to fucking make it work and to prove to yourself, prove to the significant other that this is the right relationship. And underlying all of it is because you are unsure of your place in their life. You're unsure if the relationship is truly meant to be. You're unsure if the relationship will work out. And so you're trying to make all of these things happen to prove to yourself and to the significant other that it's going to work and that we're going to stay together regardless. The third one is that you are not genuinely happy. And it seems so simple, but so often we convince ourselves that we are happy. We try to fucking prove it to ourselves and lie to ourselves and decide what makes us happy in our head compared to deciding in our heart. Whether the relationship is toxic and you're spending more time trying to convince yourself that you're happy than just being happy or the relationship is good enough and it's just mundane and you're going through the motions, but it's not the person you're supposed to be with and they're good enough even if you know that you are capable of being happier than you are. If you have to actually question, am I happy further than just taking a moment to consider it? If you know deep in your heart that you don't belong there, you don't belong with them, you don't belong when you're with their friends, you feel like you don't belong when you're with their family, you feel out of place often, that's a really good sign (laughs) that you're not happy because you're constantly questioning where you are. There's a lack of connection and intimacy. You're consistently disappointed. You're consistently dissatisfied with how this person behaves or what this person does you feel trapped or suffocated. You feel like you don't have a choice. You have to stay in this relationship for whatever reason. You constantly are seeking validation for your relationship, like listening to this episode and waiting for me to say something that means that you are not settling in your relationship. I used to constantly look for things on the internet, like I would read tweets or I would read Instagram posts or I would listen to books or, you know, whatever videos and find ways that meant that I was supposed to be with that person. Something that said that the way that my relationship was playing out was okay. You feel resentment for the relationship for your other person. You feel complacent. You feel like this is mundane. You're just going through the motions. You're here because this is the only thing you've ever known and you're comfortable being here. You are not genuinely, truly fulfilled and excited, and passionate, and happy about the relationship. I want to give you one last bonus sign, and that is a sign that you are in denial. If you, throughout this episode, found yourself making excuses or justifications for your behavior, your partner's behavior, or the relationship, I'm sorry, babe. You're settling. I'm sorry. I know you don't want to come to terms with it, but it's the truth, and you know it's the truth. You're only hurting yourself. It's your life and you choose how to live it. Nobody is any the wiser. You're listening to this on your own. Nobody has to know that you believe this or that you think that this is true. It's between you and I. Really, it's between you and you because I have no idea if you feel that or not. You can try to work on these things with a significant other and hope that it improves. You can bend and fold and mold to fit a relationship into your life. But the right relationship does not require that. You don't have to make the right person change. You won't want the right person to change because you love and accept them for who they are. But the right person is most likely going to change for their betterment. They, on their own free will, are going to want to grow and become the better version of themselves. They are going to want to grow with you. Make sure that you guys are compatible. Make sure that you're on the same page. Make sure that you're getting along. They want to show up as the best version of themselves for you. They want to show up as the best version of themselves for themselves. 
experience. You do not have to live your human experience accepting less than you truly deserve. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. I hope I didn't ruin your life. You're going to be okay. Really, even if it feels that way, it's going to be for your betterment in the long run. Trust me. The amount of times that I've been with people and then I thought the world was going to end if we weren't together and I was so devastated by it and life moved on and it proved that it was meant to be and I can't even believe that I liked them, let alone loved them the way that I did in the past. It is at its core, the best thing for you, even if it does not feel like that right now. I promise. I promise. I promise. If you have any questions or stories that you would like shared on the episode, make sure to submit them through the question box on Wellish's Instagram at Wellish Podcast. You can also follow me on Instagram at Sarah.Rittendale and on TikTok at Sarah Rittendale for daily tips to become the best version of yourself. So check me out on both of those platforms. Despite the heavy episode, make sure your week kicks ass. It's your choice. It's your life. How you make sure that that happens. Do not forget how fucking elite you truly deeply genuinely are i will talk to you guys on monday